Tonight's video is going to look at cloud formation and precipitation. So we're going to relate what we talked about today with humidity to how clouds form and how that results in different types of precipitation. So for cloud formation, um, what's going to happen is we're going to have some warm air start rising up through the troposphere. And as that warm air rises up, it's going to cool, right? Recall from our atmosphere unit that as you go up through the troposphere, up through the troposphere rather, it gets colder. So we've got air that heats up near the ground and has a certain amount of water vapor in it. As it goes up, it gets cooler. And remember from class today that as the temperature goes down, we're going to have more relative humidity because our box is getting smaller. So we're going to run out of space for the water in the air. Eventually, the water vapor condenses to form tiny droplets or ice crystals, depending on the temperature. If it's above freezing, there'll be droplets. Below freezing, little ice crystals. And this water has to condense on little particles in the air, whether it's dust, smoke, pollen, or other things. So to relate this to yesterday, we have a temperature called the dew point that is important in cloud formation. So the temperature at which relative humidity for a particular amount of air reaches 100% is called the dew point. Right? So say I have this particular little kind of volume of air, it's been heated up at the surface and now it's rising into the air. As it goes up, it gets colder and colder. Right? So our maximum amount of water goes down and down and down until we get to a particular temperature where now our humidity is 100%. Right? That temperature is called the dew point. So it's the temperature where relative humidity reaches 100% for a particular piece of air. If our air keeps cooling, and now I have too much water. All right? There's too much water vapor for the air to hold. The extra water vapor condenses back into a liquid and forms those clouds. All right, so the humidity we can see here is still 100% in the air that's left, but that extra water vapor now has condensed back to a liquid and formed a cloud. When you have dew on the ground in the morning, what that means is overnight as it got colder, the temperature reached that dew point and water had to condense and form dew on the ground. So main types of clouds, um, we're just going to go over the very basic types of clouds. We're not going to go into a ton of detail in the little combinations. We've got cirrus clouds. These are wispy, high-altitude clouds. Right? They look like kind of like horses' tails. Cumulus clouds are like, like cotton balls and are lower in the sky. And then stratus clouds cover the sky like a blanket in low, flat layers. All right, so when like yesterday or two days ago when it's raining a lot, usually we have stratus clouds. Fog is just a cloud at ground level. So when it's fog, you're just in a cloud. And then finally, nimbus is a prefix or suffix that we can put on a cloud that means rain. So we don't really have nimbo cirrus clouds. They're too thin to support any uh, rain. But you can have cumulo nimbus. These are our big thunderstorm clouds. And you can have nimbo stratus. All right, so this is just a stratus cloud that's got so much water it's raining. This is a cumulus cloud that has so much water that it's raining. And if you need to pause to get those down, definitely do so. Last thing we're going to look at quickly is types of precipitation. All right, so when clouds get too dense and heavy, the little droplets in those clouds are going to combine. All right, so tiny little droplets, the air can actually support those. Just the air pressure itself is enough to hold those droplets up. Right, they are um, way smaller than like a pencil point on page. But when those clouds get heavy and those droplets combine, now they start to fall to the ground. And we call that precipitation. Precipitation. There we go. Right. The type of precipitation depends on temperature. We can have rain, we can have snow, we can have freezing rain, right, like you see here, or we can have something called sleet. And the type depends on the temperature in the air in the clouds, the temperature near the ground, and the temperature on the ground. All right, so you're going to want to get this table into your notes. I'm going to explain it quickly, but feel free to pause and copy this table in. So for rain, the cloud temperature, so the temperature in the clouds can either be above or below freezing. 
right? So sometimes rain will start out as snow in the clouds, but then the air near the ground is above freezing, so it melts and it hits the ground as water. The ground temperature is also above freezing, so it stays as water. Snow is below freezing all the way, right? It starts out as ice directly in the clouds. It stays as tiny little bits of ice on the way down and stays frozen on the ground. Sleet is rain that freezes on the way down in the air. So it starts out as rain, but then before it hits the ground, it turns to ice. And so if you were to walk outside when it's sleeting, it feels a little needle stabbing your skin because all those raindrops are frozen into ice. And then on the ground, they'll usually stay frozen. Freezing rain, notice the key difference here. Starts out as rain, above freezing, but then the air near the ground is still above freezing. So freezing rain is rain all the way until it hits the ground. So we'll get this sometimes if it's been really, really cold for a few days, and then warms up, and then rains. Right? So it might only be you know, 2 degrees Celsius, which is enough to have rainfall, but the ground might still be minus 10. So now when that rain hits the ground, it freezes into ice. And this can be dangerous, obviously, for cars and for power lines. All right, that's all your notes for tonight. Make sure you write three questions at the bottom, and we will go over this stuff in class tomorrow.